Hello everyone, I'm going to go over my level 97 Witch Necromancer that has 40.8 full DPS. The build focuses mo mostly on zombie damage and it also focuses on summon cast golem DPS. I'm going to go over the build, how to level it, I'm going to go over everything possible that I can. If I miss anything, let me know. The POB or the path of building will be in the description. I also will have a stream that I did earlier today in the description as well. So I'm just going to begin on the talent tree and how I would level it. To begin, you're not going to be able to level completely with the actual path of building that I'm giving you. So you're going to have to find a way to level your character. So I, my suggestions would be to use skeletons, summon skeletons, or raising spirits to supplement your um, zombies at earlier levels. Because it's, it's not easy to raise zombies while doing a boss fight or while doing trash. And if your zombies die, it's a lot easier to summon skeletons or raising summoning spirits. So now, my first ability I'd go for is Lord of the Dead to increase my raised zombies and skeletons. And then I'd go and get Death Attunement to increase my raised zombie skeletons and specters. The specters you're going to be using on this build are going to be Chieftains. They're from Act 2. You can look it up and they give you Frenzy Charges, which increases your um, damage of your minions a lot. Then I'd go and I'd get Sacrifice. Sacrifice is a lot of regen for your minions, a lot of minion life, and it also gives you regeneration as well. Then you're gonna go down and you're gonna get Grave Pack. Grave Pack is for more damage for your minions. While you go to get Grave Pack, you will be getting health, regeneration, and minion stuff. After that, you're going to get Redemption, and then you're gonna get Righteous Army. Both of these are for minion damage, but it also gives them regen and gives you a little bit of regeneration as well. After that, you're gonna get Sovereignty, and the first ore that you're gonna to wanna to get is Purity of Elements. Purity of Elements is very important. It increases your resists a lot, and it makes you immune to elemental ailments. So whenever you could get a, that aura, Purity of Elements, put it on, love it, use it, and it's also part of the end game build as well. After that, you're going to go down and you're going to get constitution for more health. And then you're going to get sentinel for more resists and more protection. And then you're going to get the resists. So at this time, while you're leveling, you're going to have a lot of resists from purity of elements and from your talent tree which is going to make it a lot easier for you to level through cruelty and the harder phases of leveling the leveling. So after that, you're going to have to work on, um, you're gonna to have to get Golem Commander. Golem Commander will only be useful until you like get to around level 34 when you could actually use your summon Chaos Golems. So getting Golem Commander earlier than level 34 is not going to help you because you cannot get Golems until level 34. That's a little tip to let you know about. And then you're going to work over here and you're going to get your curse, your Whispers of Doom, another curse. So the two curses you're going to be using with this build are going to be Temporal Chains and Despair because your main focus is on Chaos damage. But your minions are doing poison, which in turn is cast. So that's that. And then you're going to get your block chance. You're going to, um, this is up to you. You could get whirling barrier, which is for blocking. And then you could get stalwart stance, which is also for blocking. You could make the choice of getting your health whenever you want. So blocking and health are up to you. This build has a lot of problems with dexterity, so you have to take a lot of notes on the um, talent tree for dexterity, unfortunately. But you could always um, not have this problem by putting it on your gear. The um, build also has 
Mind Over Matter, which is a huge bump and effective hit pool, and also uses Eldridge Battery. These two nodes on the talent tree are up to you, to your discretion of when you actually feel like you could use them. What happens is, is that by the time you actually do have everything going in this build, it's going to be hard to keep up your minions and use all your abilities, so I use Eldridge Battery to get around that problem. Having Eldridge Battery and Mind Over Matter going at the same time is a very high effective hit pool um, increase. The gem, you could use any passive skill on a um, cluster jewel that you want. It's 12 passive skills. So whatever one is the cheapest you could use, um, it, it, it always helps to get um, the small passives grant three increase attack speed and cast speed and um, 35 increase effect. There's also 25 increase effect. So pick whatever one that's cheapest for you that you could actually get at the time. I'm just letting you know what are really good for it. The build has the forbidden flame and forbidden um, flesh and you are using void beacon. Void Beacon decreases the amount of cast resist and stops creatures and bosses from regenerating their life. But you have to be really close to them in order for it to work. I got both of these for like around 8 to 9 Divine as well. So it's not too bad of a price, but it's a huge DPS increase. If you take it off at the end game, it's going to be about a 5 million DPS decrease. Just to let you know. And I need to find where the gate, um, I'll go over the Watcher's Eye really fast. I am using Cast Resist while affected by Purity of Elements, which is huge. Any chance you get more Cast Resist on a build is huge. So I'm using the one that gives you Cast Resist while using Purity of Elements. Purity of Elements, again, is my favorite aura in the game. It increases your resist and it gives you um, immunity to ailments. And then I have phasing while affected by haste. What this does is it makes you able to run through creatures, mobs, bosses, whatever you want to call them. So you don't, like, it's really nice because you can just run through everything. Uh, one other good ability to have on this um, build that I don't have at the moment that you might actually want to get is unwavering stance. Not being able to get stunned while moving around as fast as you are is exceptionally good so if you want this one i definitely i'll have it in the pov because it's really good it helps a lot to keep you alive the life mastery is just increased life and reduced recovery rate life so that's up to you too and uh, um staff mastery has recovered two energy shield and two percent life while blocking while wielding a staff. And the other one is a 30 increased defense while wielding a staff. The masteries are up to you when you want to get them. But both of these um, staff masteries that I'm using are a huge increase in effective hit pool. So um, that goes over the talent tree. Um, the ascendancies, um, you are going to want to get unnatural strength first because of how much of a DPS increase it is. Removing unnatural strength is a huge DPS decrease, so getting it as quickly as possible is going to help your killing speed a great deal. I'm going to take it off, and it is an 8 million DPS decrease for this build. So get it, love it, and use it. But I'm sorry, your first, your first one's going to be mindless aggression because you actually have to get mindless aggression to get unnatural strength. But your first goal is to get unnatural strength. Then... Your next one's probably going to be Bone Barrier to increase your effective hit pool and increase your health regeneration. Then last is going to be Mistress of Sacrifice. When you get Mistress of Sacrifice, you're going to want to be using Bone Offering all the time. What Mistress of Sacrificing does is it allows you, the player, to use Offerings. So when you initially use an Offering, it only goes to your minions. So when you use Mistress of Sacrifice, it allows you to use it as well. So when you use it, you're getting a ton of effective hit pull, block chance and spell block chance from using Bow and Offering. That's kind of like one of the nuances of the build. 
So make sure you're using Blown Offering when you get Mistress of Sacrifice. And that's the um, talent tree. I'm going to go over the skills. I'm going to go over... Um, you might not have Aspect of the Spider. I have it in my um, items on my ring, but I don't use it. I'm just letting you know that the Aspect of Spider is turned off. Bone, off, bone Armor is turned off as well. You could use Bone Offering if you want to. It's up to you. But I believe it is a... It's, it's a nice buff, but it's not that great of a buff. And the idea behind the build was not to use an ability that would stop me from using Withering Step. So I don't use Bone Offering. It's turned off. Now I'm going to jump into the meat and potatoes of the build. I'm going to jump into the zombie, your main focus damage ability. I have Phantasmal Ray Zombies. It is the most damage you could get for zombies. The highest variant. But you could use a normal one that's level 21, which is going to be very cheap. The Phantasmal 21 level is going to be very expensive, very hard to get. So I'm letting you know now that the variant for normal level 21 is very cheap and you could use it. If you have unawakened, Awakened Unbound Elements, Awakened Minion Damage, Awakened Void Manipulation Power, you do not need a Power 4. A Power 3 is not going to be that drastic of a DPS decrease. I'm going to show you really quick. It is only about a 2 million full DPS decrease. So getting a power 3 will definitely lower the cost of your build, of this build as well. So it's up to you. And a multi-strike is a different variant. and is much cheaper than getting Awakened multi-strike, which is about 28 to 30 divine. And the um, variant that I'm using does not need to be 21. Like the level 20 gem of this version, multi strike is only going for a divine when I like when I got it, and um, so that goes over a multi strike. Getting the um, weapon gems, everything should not be too expensive. I would have to say it's going to cost about five to six divine if you go by the way that I'm doing it and how I'm telling you to save currency on it. Next, I'm going to go over the summon cast golems. The level 21 normal variant of Summon Cast Golems is not going to be expensive. I'm also using the same multi-strike as I am on my zombie, so it's not expensive. Then you have Awakened Void Manipulation, Awakened Minion Damage, and Awakened Unbound Ailments. And then you have Awakened Melee Physical Damage. This is going to cost about the same amount of money to actually get as the zombies. So be ready to spend out about like 12 to 15 divine for both of them. But, you know, that's that's the way it goes. If you want a high DPS build that does content really well, you're going to have to spend some currency, unfortunately. The um, summon cast golems, there are four of them. So how am I getting four um, summon cast golems? Well... You're getting one from the talent tree. You're getting one from Golem Commander. And then the other, then another two, you are getting from the anime stone, which gives you an increased summon golem. And then when you're using three primordial jewels, you get another one. And then you initially, for being a player, get one. So that's four of them. And the primordial might or whatever type of primordial jewels that you want to use are not expensive. So getting three of those to increase the amount of summon cast golems is not going to be expensive. I, I'm going to say it's about a divine, maybe even cheaper. So, and let me go over this really quick too. I forgot to do it on the talent tree. You're using the gaze, which is pretty expensive, unfortunately. Last time I checked, it was going for about 11 divine. So it's, it could be anywhere from 10 to like 14 divine now. What it does is it increases your overtime multiplier damage with Ghastly Eye Jewels by 30%. So in the increments of the Ghastly Eye Jewels when you put them on are by 6% and you only get 30%. So you can only have 5 Ghastly Eye Jewels affecting the gaze to increase your damage. So like, you know, just like a little tip. And um, that, 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 um, that goes over that. And then the boots have Desecrate, Brace. Brace is turned off if you want to. You can find a way to find find a way to get Grace going. Your best bet would be to um, 
Actually, I'm just going to remove Grace. No, I'll leave Grace in. If you find a way to get Grace going on your build, it's going to be a very large effective hit pool increase. See, like right now, it's showing up as a negative because I don't have the mana reserve to do it. But if you can find a way to get Grace going, it's going to be a huge effective hit pool increase. Or you could just use whatever you want for this spot. So this is like a free gem slot for you. Then I have Calling Strike, and then I have Raise Specters. Actually, I'm going to turn Grace into Feeding Frenzy. Feeding Frenzy is going to increase the damage through buff given by your, by your Raise Specters. And then you have Calling Strike, which kills enemies, bosses, and everything under 10% life and increases your support damage by a lot. Then you have Ray Specters, which are going to be Chieftains. Let me see if I actually have that set up correctly. Um, no, I don't want to do that. All right. I'm just going to put this in here. <clears throat> Carnage Chieftains are going to be the ones that you use. So I have it set up in a POB. When I link it, you'll be able to see what minions are being used, and you have three of them. And they are included in the full DPS. But the full DPS of these Ray Specters is non-existent and you don't have to worry about it. So that goes over the um, boots. And then I have the gloves where I have Bone Offering, which I went over. You want to make sure you're using Bone Offering all the time. You have like a little icon above your head of like the um, Bone Offering being on you. So you're going to know whenever it's on. Variants don't really matter and the quality doesn't matter on Bone Offering. Then you have Temporal Chains and Despair, which are your curses. You are going to be hard casting or self casting Temporal Chains and Despair. And then you have Withering Step. Withering Step is going to increase your movement speed, increase your effective hit pool, and it allows you to run through creatures. You're already going to have phasing from haste, but if you don't, Withering Step will allow you to have phasing as well. What Withering Step does is it increases your withering sticks by a certain amount every time you touch a creature. At the moment, it's doing nine for me. And, and it makes you very, very fast. This build is very, very fast, high DPS, and has really good defenses. It's an all around good build. Now I'm gonna go over to Helmet, and the Helmet has Determination, Enlighten, Purity of Elements, my favorite aura, you wanna use it immediately when you can get it. And then it has Veil Haste. Bell Haste is not ticked on here, but if you actually do get it for um, maps or for when you get it on Pinnacle bosses or Guardian bosses, your DPS jumps significantly. It jumps about 5 million full DPS, but I don't leave that on because you're not always going to have it. I don't think it's a fair representation of how much damage you're actually doing because you're not always going to be using Bell Haste. Enlightened 4, I got it for 11 Divine. It's very expensive, and you do not need a four. You might not even need it, hold on. No, you don't need an Enlighten on here. You can put whatever you want in this slot right here. So if you want to have Enlighten to increase your effective hit pool from Mine Over Manor and Eldridge Battery, it's up to you. But if you want to use anything here, you can. So it's up to you. All right, that goes over the gems. I'm gonna go over the items. The items, you have the cane, which is extremely good. I think it's the best in the game for zombies or cat or for golems builds. And it's really good for skeleton builds as well. Get it, love it, learn it, and hopefully you can get it. I've seen it go from as low as six divine and as high as a 40 divine. So I'm not sure how much the cost of it, of it is, is going now. I'm going to look it up really quick so you guys can see how much, it, how much it's going for really quick. Because the last time I checked, it was going for like about 40 divine. All right, let me just put in the filters. We got the king. All right, minions have increased attack speed to level of socketed support gems. 
and it is going for twelve the mine right now which is not bad in the whole scheme of things considering i think it's the best item in the game so there's only one being sold for twelve the mine right now which is not bad if you were to get a really really good wand and a shield it'd be way more expensive than this and to be honest with you this cane is way better than a shield and a stack for what you're doing on my build all right so i'm back into the bit on um, build looking at items the helmet does not have a enchant on it if you want an enchant for it look for zombies have attack speed attack damage or you could also increase the amount of withering stacks that you get from your withering step by two to three or if you you shouldn't have any mana problems with this build for auras so those three are definitely really good the stats on this helmet are extremely good you do not need spell suppression so the cost of it will be even cheaper when i got this helm it was eight divine but it should be cheaper considering you won't need to get spell suppression and the enchant you want on it or the bench crap you want on it is they have raised zombies plus one or raised or plus one skeletons the um chest is very cheap the discipline increased or effect is wrong you could get any increase or effect that you want or whatever implicit from either a world and the searing you want so but what your main focus is looking for is for minions to have 60 percent chance to poison enemies on hit i cannot stress how much how important it is to have these they're going that's a huge dps increase removing it is going to drastically decrease your dps and it dropped it really really bad it dropped it by about like 20 million plus so make sure you have that on on your on it and it's not cheap like i said before and getting your socket colors for it are very easy because it has armor evasion shield and energy shield the triad grips are all white sockets what that does is it allows you to attack through its energy shield so if a creature boss or anything has an energy shield your minions won't be affected they'll just go right through the energy shield and this item makes all of your minion damage um chaos damage and you want to have all white sockets and it goes for four divine the boots are very cheap the implicits the either of the world and the searing implicits are definitely up to you and the stats you don't need suppressed spell damage you can get whatever stats you want on your boots to supplement everything that you're trying to do with your build i always look for run speed and like resist and max life for my boots the eyes of the gray wolf i do not have a, a really good optimized one but you could definitely pick whatever eyes of the great wolf that you want but what you're looking for is to get a plus two maximum number of ray zombies and that increases your damage and your full damage a lot i picked increased global defenses to increase my more to get more effective hit pool but this is a lower end one i could get 50 increased global defenses i was kind of low on currency i got this um item for about five for five chaos orbs one drawback from this item is that it's going to cost quite a bit of money to put a an ointment on it because it's corrupted you cannot get it not corrupted so if you wanted an anointment you could always put whispering of doom and remove a lot of your um talent tree nodes to actually increase your damage or even increase your survivability even more so that goes over the eyes of the great wolf the rings are both bone rings they are both optimized very well so i paid a lot for these so if you want one you could definitely get them cheaper and um get a very good bone ring they're dime a dozen you can get a ton of bone rings for really good for really cheap the um, belt is a darkness and throne, and it's bo using both ghastly eye jewels. The eye jewels that you're looking for are minion steel increased damage while using a minion skill. And your minion skill that you're going to be using on this build is bow and offering. And then you're looking for increased chance to poison. And the last two stats that you're looking for on the min for the ghastly eye jewels are up to you. But if you want to increase your damage, you're looking for minion steel cast damage and minion steel physical damage. 
but the last two stats are definitely up to you. And the um the flasks are up to you as well. I'm just using a health potion with resist and a run speed. The run speed one makes this build really, really fast, and it's really, really fun. So the flasks are up to you and uh, however you want to protect yourself. And they should be very, very cheap, probably like about 5 to like 10 cast orbs, if that. So I'm going to jump into configurations. I am using the god that allows you to get more um, physical damage reduction with enemies by you and run speed by 8%. It has other stats, but that's my main focus of why I'm using this major god. And the minor god is going to um, make you not get hurt while you have bleeding, which is really cool. The minions are always on full life, does not have to be ticked on. It's not that big of a DPS decrease, but you do have two talent nodes that increase your damage while you have um, minions full life. So I'll just leave that on. If you have frenzy charges from your um, chieftains from Act 2, those are your specters. If you have elusiveness from your withering step, you have flash active, yes you do. You have about 19 summoned minions. I'm not entirely sure how many minions you have, but I believe it's 19. And what that does is that when you have that many minions by you, Bone Barrier from your um, Ascendancies um, give you more armor, physical armor reduction and life regenerate and energy shield regeneration. So really nice to have. So I mean, are by enemies? Eight. Have you been hit recently? Yes. Have you blocked recently? You probably will because your block is setting a chance to block in 20... 36% spell block, so you're definitely going to be blocked on. If you use minion skill recently, Bone Offering is the one that we're going to be using. And then you have five corpses recently consumed and as from Bone Offering. I should be seeing a feeding frenzy here from my Ray Specters. It's not ticked down. So I had to turn feeding frenzy on. So feeding frenzy is a buff that you're getting from your Ray Specters which increases the damage a lot on this build. I was actually wrong about the DPS. The, D the build is actually doing 47.8 million full DPS now. And you have 15 Withering Stacks from Withering Step. And um, actually, this would actually be a little bit lower, actually. So, hold on a second. I need to change a little bit around here. Okay, this is what's wrong. Okay, there we go. Now, your 15 Withering Stacks are coming from Withering Touch from your Spectres and Withering Step. So you definitely have 15 Withering Stacks going while you're doing a boss. Or when you're doing normal mobs and trash and maps, you're not going to be doing 15 Withering Stacks. But on a boss, pinnacle boss or whatnot, you should be doing 15 Withering Stacks. How the way I have everything set up on the build. I'm going to go through the enemy boss. The, is the enemy a boss? At the moment, the boss, it's not set up for anything. And you're doing about 47 full DPS million. So when I change it to standard boss, you are doing about 40 million full DPS. When you're doing a pinnacle boss, you are doing about 30.4 full DPS million. And then on uber pinnacle boss, you're doing about 11.5 full DPS. But this build is not designed to do pinnacle bosses. So you're not going to be able to do pinnacle bosses, unfortunately. But you should be able to do um, Pinnacle and Guardian bosses extremely well. What this build thrives on is doing maps really fast and being able to do Pinnacle and Guardian bosses really fast. So I'm going to jump into the game. I'm going to show you what's going on with the build. I'm going to show you some maps and how fast it is and tell you the strength and weaknesses of the build. Okay, um, just let me... 
Okay, I'm gonna do the this one, and I'm gonna explain to you what's going on in the build. All right, so when you first zone into a map, you wanna put up bone offering to get your effective hit pool going. So now I'm just, I have a um, withering step set to my um, mouse button. So whenever I'm moving or whenever withering step comes back up, it is used immediately. The only thing stopping you in this build is going to be re reapplying bone offering. And as I went over before, bone offering is really important to increase your effective hit pool. This, this build is extremely good at clearing maps. It's very fast. If you wanted to do them, if you, if you wanted to level with this build, you should be able to level very easily if you're cautious and play very careful. But I don't understand why bone offering is not going off, but there it goes. It's extremely fast and it excels at maps that are a um, larger area for you to run in because then you'd be able to avoid and zigzag through um, creatures, mobs, and everything. All right. And as you can see, I'm almost done with the map. It also has Veil of Grace for more damage and more run speed. I'll do another map. I'm going to do... Where is it? Okay, here we go. Monsters are hexproof. As you can see, I'm doing alchemy maps. This is a very good map for this build because you could run through and um, avoid creatures even touching you because of how fast you are. This build is extremely fast. It could do pinnacle bosses very easily. It's not going to do them perfect, but you could easily burn them down very quickly. I don't have any um, pinnacle boss fragments for right now or um, invitations, so I'm just going to do some maps, but I'm just letting you know right now that they can do them very easily. All right. I'm just going through the map. I could have already finished this map by killing the boss if I wanted to. This build is really good for... Um, getting a lot of guardian maps and um, doing maven invitations because you're doing the map so fast that it you're just going to be blowing through maps. You want to make sure that you have bone offering going all the time to increase your effective hit pool. And to um, set off your minions, deal increased damage from your ghastly eye jewels. All right, this map is almost over. We got a syndicate building here. I don't really care. I shouldn't have popped Val Hayes, but more increased run speed always helps with more damage. That's two maps. I need another. Let's do this one. Very fast build. Making you want to make sure you have bone offering going. This build does not have convoking, so you're just running and letting your minions catch up to you while crushing them. Another cool thing about my builds in this build is that strong boxes aren't going to be able to freeze you, stun you, or cause any like um, elements against you while you open it. So you're pretty much, you can open the strong box and get out of dodge before it actually does anything to you because you cannot be frozen, you cannot be ignited, and this comes from purity of elements. That's why it's one of my favorite um I shouldn't say it's my favorite. It is my favorite. Purity of Elements is my favorite aura in the game. 
I use it in every build that I have. I think it's really important to use because of how many immunities it gives you. And it also helps, oh, got smoked. Hop back in. I'll just do another map because I don't want to run back to the same spot that I had. So I'll do this map right here. I wish I had some pinnacle bosses and everything to show you because it, it does pinnacle bosses really easy too. I probably died because I didn't have bone offering on. This build has a significant amount of effective hit pool. So if it dies, there's really not much you could do about it, unfortunately, because I'm giving the build a lot of effective hit pool. Plus, you have your flask going, so you should be really hard to kill. And as I said before, if you want to actually level with this build, you could definitely be a lot more careful than I am being right now to level. One of my goals with this build was to allow my character not to be, um, was to allow my character not to be hindered while using Withering Step. Because most of my builds use Molten Shell and um, Convoking in it. So whenever you use them, your Withering Step is stopped. So what I wanted to do was make it to where my build would not be stopped while using Withering Step. I thought that was very important to try to do. I want to make it as fast as possible without being hindered by anything. I'm going to do this map. I will just leave that. So this map, no creatures can be cursed and the boss is possessed. Like doing possessed bosses is dangerous business because of how much, how fast and um, how hard they hit. I believe they also have more um, survivability as well. So I'm just going to go through this map and do the Guardian, the Elder Guardian, I believe it is. I need a drink of some Mountain Dew. Thirsty. <sighs> Already at the boss room. Let's see if I could do it without dying because the boss is possessed and I cannot hex it at all. So I'm not gonna be doing max DPS and he's buffed an extremely amount. Gotta make sure I have bone offering up. That was very good DPS right there. I got through the phase really fast. I still have Valley, so I'll pop it on the last phase of this boss. Make sure I have Bone Offering. 